to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And it's been a pretty busy day today. Uh, had some work in the shop that needed to be addressed. Got to pay the bills. <laughs> anyway, I'm having my Trump coffee and I thought I would show off some of the uh, the uh, modifications that I've done to the uh, T2. Now I've changed up on the scope with this and I'm kind of, this, this scope is kind of growing on me. It's a Westlake. It's got its uh, goods and it's got its point bads. Uh, number one, I like the objective to be adjustable. Um, I like to be able to go from zero to infinity. Uh, I just I just like my big scopes, man. And uh, this one was a little cheaper, but it's all one piece. Uh, this this scope is the whole mount, the rings, everything, the scope, all is one piece. And I've never seen one made like that. And Tim brought that to my attention. And I, I never imagined it, it'd be like that. I figured it was just a Picatinny rail. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. <clears throat> I do have a scratch in my freaking barrel already. That was my fault. Uh, because this is where the set screw was at right here. And when I took this tube off, you can't distinguish whether front or rear, unless you mark it. And I didn't, I turned it around the opposite way, and now my damn scratch mark's right there on top. So now I'm gonna have another one on that one. So no matter how I put it, it's gonna show. But I'm thinking about repainting that barrel anyway. Uh, I'm thinking real serious about doing some uh, camouflage dip on the barrel shroud and on the cheek rest. And I think that's all the camouflage I'm going to put on this. Uh, I'm, I might camouflage the uh, barrel bands. But anyway, this is the barrel band. And I'll show you a picture of it right here. We have a Picatinny rail all the way down to here and then we've got a place to put our sling and hmm that's interesting I didn't make it that thin this one must be a dud because that's awful thin right there on that edge it's supposed to come on up around a little bit my printer must have stopped on me and stopped early I never noticed that that's supposed to be round and it's square. But anyway, uh, these are just the uh, prototypes anyway. Uh, then we've got one right here. I'm gonna offer one with just the band. I'm gonna offer the one with the wide band with a Picatinny rail and a sling stud hole. And I'm offering this block that goes in the back here, all you do is just take your thumb wheel off of your rest, take it clear off, push the bolt all the way out, pull this off, then you take this screw in here out of it, and then you separate these two pieces here. Well, there's a stud in there on this, right about there in center. Well, right where the screw is, there's a stud that goes all the way through and they meet and lock together. And uh, this here goes right in place and then you just put it all back together except this time you have this in it. It's pretty simple and I'll probably end up doing, doing a video on how to do that. But that's not what this video is focused on. And yes, we're sporting the famous SBD, <laughs> silent but deadly, and it's proven to be right, too, man. I named that 
or at uh, suppressor right. I can't beat it. Every suppressor I've made after that, always up in the 80s. This one here, yesterday, it showed me uh, 74. And that was against the Poof Daddy. It done like 81. The uh, Silent Storm that I'm working on, I don't think it's going to make any difference either because it's about the same as the uh, Poof Daddy. Just a little smaller, but it gets, I'm showing 81 on this too. And this one got down to 74. Uh, 74, 74 dBs, that's pretty, pretty damn silent. <laughs> uh, I mean, your, your surrounding noise is uh, 40, anywhere from 40, three on up to 60. So you're getting pretty silent. You're, you're starting to blend in with the surrounding noise. And that's what a silence is for. So, but anyway, I'm having a kind of a rough time getting this thing sighted in. And I went to shoot the target today, I even put a new target up. And Man, that thing's all over the place. It, it's like you're shooting a rifle that has uh, a smooth bore barrel. Uh, I actually seen, watched the pellet spiral in a big circle before it hit the target. I mean, it made a full circle. And, uh, and that circle was about that big around. I sat and watched it go. And I thought, wow. <laughs> That ain't right. But uh, that's the upgrade for this, this gun. And we'll bring more along about this gun as I find something right or wrong with it. So far, man, I'm telling you, this is a beautiful gun. I mean, you got a walnut stock, and that thing just stuck to that. Ain't nothing sticky there. But anyway, oh, I know what it did. It went underneath that tread aluminum. Uh, it's walnut. And I'm telling you, it's a beautiful piece of walnut. The only thing that I see that I'm going to have to do to this is I'm going to have to pin this stock, just like I do every stock I make. Uh, so this one's no different. And I'm probably going to drill down through there and pin this stock for the simple reason. You see where your grain is? You got very little grain holding that grip. The wrong move on the wrong day when the weather is just perfect, you're going to find this broke off if they didn't pin it. Now, we'll find out. Uh, so... You have, when you're working with wood, you have to pay attention to that grain. You want that grain to be as long as possible. So a sideways grain would be even better. But then you're going to throw off all the rest of the grain. So it's kind of a, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. So if you just pin it, you ain't got to worry about it. So... We're probably going to pin this if it ain't already done, which I'm sure it ain't. Uh, the trigger. Uh, the T1 didn't have this problem. This one, however, does. It's got a trigger creep spring sound to it. And I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it if I, say, if I don't say anything. Let's see if we can hear that screech. Make sure I'm shooting in the light. I think it's ready. You hear that spring? Oh, that would drive me nuts in the woods. <laughs> I don't even have to shoot it. But um, I love this gun, and I'm going to make it shoot 
like it's supposed to. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do it. We got us a little partner to come in here. Hey, look, you gotta go outside to catch your uh, little mosquitoes. Where'd you get? Come here. Who else lets a skeeter go? <laughs> All right, so then here's the surprise gun. And there ain't a whole lot of videos on this gun. Uh, I see a lot of the old Woodstock uh, Chiefs. This is the Beeman Chief in 177. I had two of everything else. So I said, why not just get me a cheap old 177? And this was the cheapest one they had, which was $179. Well, I have plans for this gun. I don't know when it's going to happen. So guys, before, you, before I even say anything, don't hound me over this. Because I don't know if this is going to happen. I'm trying to get my ducks in a row. But I think I'm going to turn this into a pistol, sort of like this one. Uh, and I think I can do it. I can use the same grips that I used on my beautiful, beautiful, handsome sweetheart of an Avenger. Yes, she's sporting an SBD also. This is what you call gun porn. <laughs> but I can use these grips and stay with the skull theme. And who knows, we might make these two guns match. Uh, we might do that. But I'm thinking about taking the stock off of this thing, and I've done took the uh, suppressor off the end of it, cut the threads off of it, and re-threaded it for half inch 20. The problem is, I don't know what the hell's going on. I took my tap that said half inch by 20, so I put it on here. It fits perfect, all right? Half by 20. So then I go get one of my suppressors. I go to thread it on there and it barely, I mean the threads are barely catching. I know they're both the same. So I went and tested it with my uh, thread gauge. For some reason, my tap says half inch by 20, but isn't really. So, <laughs> I think I got some fucked up threads, but that don't matter because those threads are going to be cut off of there anyway because we're going to make a 15 inch pistol. And once I've got everything cut down, and this is the perfect candidate for that, and I'll tell you why that's the perfect candidate. Uh, do I have a Phillips screwdriver in here? Now, you might have to go refer to that picture of the uh, pistol that they want $1,000 for. I'm trying to reproduce that. Now, this is going to be a 177, not a 22. So, the speed's going to be a little different. All right, so now we've got the stock off of it. You know, that's wrong. That is just wrong. <laughs> Why can't we just have a solid piece of plastic? Everybody's worrying about that weight. If you ain't fit enough to carry your gun, don't go in the wood. Because you, that deer is heavier than your gun. Anyway, um, so basically what I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to measure from here to 15 inches. That's how long the gun's going to be. Now, this is just beginning thoughts, all right? Then we're going to cut that right there. 
and we're going to move all this up to the new pipe, the part you're going to keep. So we'll move all this up by machining the holes for the valve, three holes, and they are exactly 45 degrees from each other. So uh, hopefully we can set it up in the mill with a dividing head and a tailstock. So then we would have to thread that place up here because that's what your screw goes through to hold your stock on it. So um, then we got to mill out a slot in here for the sear. And um, then these caps, all I have to do is to drill the hole straight down the middle to allow for this screw to go down through. And um, it's fairly simple, simple thing to do. And you're, all you're doing is just transferring all this to here. Now granted, it's not going to give you very much of a, a um, uh, it's not going to give you very much volume. So that, that's the problem I'm having with doing this build is I don't want to put too small a tank on it and then I've done screwed up a tank for nothing. Um, I'm not sure how they have that gun set up inside, but um, I could possibly do away with the uh, the gauge because if you're filling it up, you got a gauge on your pump anyway. And I would believe that gauge over this gauge anyway. So it just makes sense that to get more volume by taking this block out, then that gives you a bigger tank and still keeps your gun at 15 inches because 15 inches is a pretty damn long gun. Yeah, I can make this thing 16 inches, but uh, you know, at what point are you gonna be like this? <laughs> You got to be able to manhandle this thing. Plus, we got to worry about weight of a stock, which ain't going to be much. Uh, I may just 3D print it and make it look like the Desert Eagle. And all I'd have to do is, if you look at that picture again, all it is is just a square that just gives it its form. And it's over top of this, and we can use a set screw to set screw it into place and it'll look and act you can still put 3000 psi in this now how many shots you're going to get i have no clue because <laughs> i'm not a air calculator i wish i was but uh, that's that was why i got this was because i wanted to, i think it's the perfect candidate or Benjamin Discovery would have been a good candidate for doing it, but $179. If I mess up, at least I learned something. But I don't think I'm going to mess up on it because all I'm doing is just rearranging things. It still should shoot exactly the same, except you're not going to have as many shots because your tank will be smaller. So that's, that's the biggest thing that I want to try to calculate how big of a tank it is and if we eliminate the gauge block and not drill the hole for that then that's going to allow us probably another inch inch and a half of volume and every inch counts in this little tube so you might get A magazine or two out of it I don't know uh, this actually I don't know that'd be pushing it uh, these magazines are like I said 177 and they hold 12 shots I believe so I don't think you're gonna get a full 24 
shots out of a tank that small at 3,000 PSI. So it'd be different if it was regulated. Uh, I don't think this one's regulated. So for $179, I guarantee it's not. <laughs> so it's just an idea. And I haven't nailed down what I want to do yet. I don't know if I want to turn this into a, a shooter or a rifle and just build a new stock for it. And there is the covert cattleman. It actually looks good on there. I buggered up the damn barrel trying to get that piece of junk they had on there off of it because i don't i don't like it i didn't like that end that looked stupid so i i never use open sights so i don't need them and because of this longer suppressor that cattleman sent uh for me to review which is coming up soon i uh, thought i was going to have that video up but i ended up having a lot of problem with this so we're probably going this one's probably not going to be the the candidate for uh well i guess we could for loudness but uh i just can't get this thing accurate for some reason uh it's I don't see anything physically wrong with it. The barrel looks good. Uh, now, I haven't looked down in the barrel yet. Uh, I guess that's my next step. But something just ain't right with it. And uh, it's just all over the place. And I ran out of the one that is the favorite. So I'm down to trying to sight in a gun with a pellet that's not its favorite and it just happens to be that its favorite is the one I can't get. <laughs> so now you know the rest of the story, right? But um, that's a pretty gun. It's got two big old knots on the side of it. That was one other thing I wanted to show you. It's a beautiful stock, but it does have a flaw. Uh, I can feel where it's separated right there at that knot. That's not a good thing. That's a crack already. Yeah, that's a crack already through that knot hole. So that's the only thing that concerns me. But that knot stops right there, so the grain is kind of swirly in this area, and that is awful straight over here, though. So I'm thinking that it's straight all the way up to right here, so this it's all concentrated in this area. So it's still got all that meat there to, for stability, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, it actually adds character to the gun. It needs a little sandpaper to go over it and kind of smooth it off a little bit because it does kind of catch your finger noticeably. But um, beautiful gun. I'm gonna uh, start me a porn magazine and it will have all my guns as stars <laughs> anyway I'm going to finish my Trump coffee and I just kind of wanted to show the T2 and the uh, the upgrades that I've already printed out now like I said these are the prototypes uh, I think I've got it nailed down to the point where I can put it online now these can be painted, uh, they could be sanded to look 
to look like that. Where it's got the gray look to it. Yeah, uh, you could do that. Hey, you can put swirls in it <laughs> whenever you wanted. But uh, I think those will work. Uh, they, well, they go on, and there's a set screw that goes in between it that pinches between both the barrel and the shroud, so it's directly in the middle. So they pinch against it. And this barrel is pretty straight. Uh, I was careful to make sure that that barrel is perfectly straight with that tank. Uh, now up and down, it's pretty close to, it's raised it just a hair, but not enough to, to be concerned about. Uh, so, I'm just going to have to dig into it and I'm going to reclean it and see if maybe, I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, get it over in the vise and get a more in-depth look at it, or look at it, and, uh, you know, I, I could have went and milled off the bottom of this and put a uh, Picatinny rail on it. But man, look how pretty that checker or that stippling is, man. Who in their right mind would want to disturb that beauty by putting a sling stud in there like that? So, you know, I think it's just, I think that's a good idea right there. I'm glad I seen that hole. But that's the T2. And it sure is a pretty gun. I can't even stress that enough. Don't forget to have your Trump coffee, guys. And make sure you hit that like, share, comment, subscribe. And as soon as you hit subscribe, hit that bell all. You want to see everything from this shop. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a good one. Later.